Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, today we'll be taking a look at this crazy looking integral right here, and we will be using Feynman integration. So the uh, the first step I want to make um, is we're just going to bring x to x squared. Now, you know, that's you can make the substitution that u is equal to square root of x if you want, or x is equal to u squared. Uh, it does, I'm just going to say we're bringing x to x squared. And this is this is the resulting integral. So uh, these two things are equivalent. Okay, next, we're going to recognize that we can actually break this um, 2x squared minus 1 over 4x to the 4th plus 5x squared plus 1 up into two separate fractions using partial fraction decomposition. This, this denominator right here can be factored into x squared plus 1 times 4x squared plus 1. And if you use partial fraction decomposition, this is what you get. So we can just replace all of this minus the ln x uh, with this. And uh, now we're going to be uh, using integration by parts. And you, you'll, you may have noticed if you watch uh, my channel um, regularly that I've been using uh, integration by parts in a lot of my evaluations. Um, that's because sometimes... Um, uh, reparameterization is not immediately obvious um, at first, but oftentimes if you use integration by parts, you can find a reparameterization on the resulting integral. So that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to break out integration by parts that you know, you all know the formula there. Um, and we are going to let our u equal our natural log x part right here, and uh, that means our du is 1 over x dx. We're going to let our dv equal um, 2x squared minus 1 over 4x to the 4th plus 5x squared plus 1 dx. And don't forget, that's the same as this dx. So our dv is, is this, and you'll notice that um, each one of these parts, um, it, you can easily... Um, take the antiderivative of either one of those. Uh, that's why I let uh, dv equal equal that. Um, and that implies that v is equal to arctangent x minus arctangent 2x. I'm not going to show the work there. Um, anybody watching this channel can easily anti-differentiate both of those. Okay. So this is what we get. We have the value of our original integral is equal to our u times v part evaluated at the bounds. That's right here. Um, now, you'll notice that if we evaluate them at the bounds, we get a zero times infinity um, form uh, in each case. Uh, that means we're going to have to use L'Hopital's rules to evaluate the limits. I'm just going to tell you that... Um, the limits are zero in, in both cases. If you let x go to infinity on this, you get zero. If you let x go to zero, you also get zero. I'm not going to show the work again because uh, that would make this video a lot uh, too long. Uh, anyone watching this channel can easily take those limits. Again, you just use L'Hopital's rule and you will see that they both go to zero. So this is this is what we have. Okay, so next, well, I just basically, I, I just said what we had. Our i is, since this part drops out, i is now just equal to this integral right here. So, now it's easy to see what parameterization we're going to need to make. Um, we're just going to reparameterize this by replacing this 2 in front of the x with a t. All right, so that's that's our reparameterization, and that's our function of t. And we will note that i is equal to negative 4 times our f of t evaluated at 2. If we take this f of t, multiply it by negative 4, and evaluate it at 2, we get the value of our integral. And, of course, if we evaluate um, our f of t at the point t is equal to 1, we just get 0, because we just end up with arctangent x minus arctangent x in the numerator there, so that just goes to 0. All right, now we use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign. Um, basically, all we 
that means we can just find f prime of t by taking the partial with respect to t of this integrand right here and leaving the rest alone. And if you take the partial with respect to t of, uh, of that integrand, this is what we have. We have f prime of t is equal to negative integral 0 to infinity of 1 over t squared x squared plus 1 dx. That is a uh, arc tangent form right here. Um, and again, I'm not going to show the work on that. That evaluates to minus pi over 2t. All right, so now we have f prime of t. And if we can get to f of t and evaluate it at 2 and multiply it by negative 4, we have the value for our original integral. So to get back to f of t uh, from f prime, we just integrate. So integrating negative pi over 2t gives us negative pi over 2 natural log t. And then, of course, we have a constant of integration, which we can find the value for by using the fact that f of 1 is equal to 0. So using f of 1 is equal to 0, we find that 0 is equal to 0 plus c, which means that our c is equal to 0, meaning that our f of t is simply negative pi over 2 natural log t. All right, so now, now we have it. We have our f of t. All we need to do is multiply it by negative 4 and evaluate it at the point t is equal to 2. So that's what we do. That gives us 2 pi natural log 2. All right, so in conclusion, um, this integral that we started with all the way at the beginning is simply equal to 2 pi times the natural log of 2. Again, guys, um, I'm going to be using integration by parts um, in a lot of my upcoming videos, um, as I have been in the past. Um, and like I said uh, at the beginning of this video, if you can't find a reparameterization immediately, try integration by parts. And then uh, oftentimes, or hopefully, um, the resulting integral will have an obvious reparameterization. But anyway, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time.